that I'm used to the climate A thing that if man ever found A place to live easy and happy That Eden is on Puget Sound Eden is on Puget Sound That Eden is on Puget Sound A place to live easy and happy that Eden is on Puget Sound. Hello and welcome to the Seattle Files. My name is Chris Allen, I'm your host. Every week I get together with a different Seattle comedian and together we discuss the interesting, unusual, strange, and oftentimes lesser known aspects of our shared history. Joining me today is John Excel. Hey John. Hi Chris. Thanks for being here. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Does everyone call you Chris? People, everybody calls me Chris. Mm, okay. I've known you for years. Yeah, I've called mm. you CA before. Though. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's an abbreviation for California, not where this takes place, I understand. That is, you are correct. I your, assume. Your understanding is right. All right. Uh, John is a improviser about town here in Seattle. He's a member of the horror comedy group Blood Squad that performs regularly. He's an ensemble member in Jet City Improv. Uh, anything else you do? Mm. I, I do this. You do this, I yeah. am doing this. You are doing this currently, yes. And by the time someone hears this, I will have done this because it's a recording. Yes, yeah. that's how time works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just working it out. Once I say it, I understand it. Okay, that's yeah. That's how it works. Yeah, you can see John perform regularly around town at various uh, improvised comedy shows. Yeah. Uh, John, how long have you lived in the Seattle area? Uh, all my life. I, uh, I actually hail originally from the east side of Lake Washington. Oh, Bellevue? Um, uh, yes, you knew that about me. I forgot about you. Know, yes, I am from Bellevue originally, uh, then crossed the water for college and have been on this side of the lake ever since. Mm. Uh, do you know much about Seattle history, local history? I don't. I wish I did. I, um, I remember a couple years ago there was the whole, like, hullabaloo about they thought they found the underwater billboard that Ivor had yeah. put there. Mm -hmm. And I was really excited about that. I was like, I wonder what other secrets there are. And then it wasn't real in the first place. And yeah. so I, I backed off. But I sort of unironically loved the idea of Seattle history. And I remember a few weeks ago I texted you because I was at Discovery Park. And there was that what seemed like old, like turn of the century Oh, the old military. military and I was like, what, there, yeah. what is this? Mm -hmm. And um, I asked you what that was. And I think maybe that's how I um, was invited here. Mm -hmm. But maybe we're not talking about that today. I don't know. I love... I love Seattle history. I don't know anything about it yet. Cool. So awesome. Maybe you'll help. Fantastic. Well, let's hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Cool. Uh, let's get started. Let's do it. Uh, our story begins in 1791. Good year. Yeah, good year. I love the 90s. 1791, Spanish explorer Francisco de Eliza sailed into the Pacific Northwest. He sailed along the northern shore of the Olympic Peninsula, and on the other side of the peninsula, he found a small archipelago of islands, which he named the Isla y Archipelago de San Juan, which to this day is known as the San Juan Islands. Yeah. You've been to the San Juan Islands? I have. I went to Camp Orkaila as a kid on oh, Orcas nice. Island a lot. Mm -hmm. um, first night of camp, I fell into a mud pile and ruined all my clothes. <laughs> I remember that very well. That's wow. the Seattle history I do know. Is Excellent. When, when so I you know th things that have happened to you. Yes, I you remember know. those mm -hmm. parts. Not all of them, but that one. I got dirty. Cool. Yeah, I, I, you know, and that's like the very basic. How did this this series of islands here in the area of British Columbia mm -hmm. and and you know what might have been at at worst French territory? How did you get the name San Juan's? Thank you very yeah, much. Spanish explorers. There you go. Mm -hmm. He sort of stumbled upon it and said, "These are mine." Cool. Yeah, yeah, that happened a lot with yeah, Western explorers. I mm -hmm. guess so. Yeah. Uh, in the early 1800s, the Pacific Northwest was a disputed territory. While natives had lived here for thousands of years, there was conflict between the United States and Canada over who had who should have control over what is now British Columbia, Washington State, Idaho, and Oregon, which at the time was called the Oregon Country. Mm -hmm. So Canada was still under the control of the British Empire, yep. and everything from the kind of the tip of British Columbia down to Oregon over to Idaho. It was all kind of one chunk of land. And, and I imagine pretty thick with trees, so you couldn't actually say, like, this is a boundary for this country. It was yeah. Just all sort of woods and... It was, yeah, it was a lot of woods. I mean, there yeah. were rivers and things like that and mountain ranges forming forming boundaries, but... Sure. Mm, but yeah, it was it was uh, largely just forest. Yeah, there's not really a horizontal border, right? There's no, mm -hmm. there's no mountain range separating us from Canada. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Treaty of 1818 agreed to joint settlement of the region between the U.S. and the British, uh, where each could colonize and have safe passage through the land, but neither could claim it for their respective governments. The treaty settles border disputes in other areas, but on the West Coast, it takes the attitude of, we'll figure it out later. 
Mm. And they agree to revisit claim to the area in 10 years. Well, I don't see what could go wrong. It probably, no. worked. It probably worked fine. Yeah, this is this is the end of the story. They naturally <laughs> settled in a straight line mm-hmm. uh, that made the border you know today, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, they didn't revisit it for 28 years. Oh. The the, the dispute for, over the territory. Uh, they have just joint occupying it for that time period. Sure. And then the Oregon Treaty of 1846 finalized the border between the U.S. and Canada as the 49th parallel. So, you know that nice, neat line that goes across yeah. North America, separates the United States from Canada? Uh, that's the 49th parallel. Uh, here in the west, the land to the north of that would become known as the Crown Colony of British Columbia, Ooh. and the land to the south would become known as the Oregon Territory. Ah. Uh, Modern-day Washington, Oregon, Idaho, sure. all of that was Oregon Territory. But now we have a line on a map saying this is it. Yes. Whereas previously it was like... When you have a movie theater armrest and there's two arms on one, and mm-hmm. like, we're doing it, but we don't like sharing it. Now, yeah. now there's two armrests for yeah. these two countries. There were a lot of uh, conflicts over that because the Canadians wanted to take the whole area to the south and the Americans yeah. wanted the whole area to the north. I imagine that both sides wanted that. They mm-hmm. seem like those kind of people. Yeah, the Treaty of 1818 actually has the, the border as the 49th parallel throughout the rest of the country, and it says to stop at the Stony Mountains. Mm. Very clearly defined... Yeah. Place to stop, which is the Rocky Mountains. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know why. Yeah, why didn't they just finish drawing the line? I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they probably they, died. Will, yeah, figure it out they later. they do it. Uh, however, Vancouver Island, Vancouver Island, which is almost entirely above the 49th parallel, dips below the proposed border. Mm-hmm. So a provision is made in the treaty to have the border dip slightly at its westernmost point and wrap around all of Vancouver Island, so the island will be in its entirety Canadian. Yeah. So the border's the 49th parallel, it hits the water, it goes south, and wraps around Vancouver Island. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so if you haven't seen a map before, it's kind of like Washington looks like a fish eating like a pellet that is a giant island. I've never heard that metaphor before. I haven't either. You just create okay. I yeah. just, I'm thinking in my head. I'm picturing a big fish and a little pellet. Mm-hmm. But it's a big pellet. It's a huge island. Oh, it's a huge. Yeah, Vancouver Island is huge, and only a very small portion of it dips below the 49th parallel. Right. So it makes sense to not have this tiny little little slip. You can say on the just island. the tip on this just on this the tip. podcast, can't you? It doesn't have just the tip. Yeah. Yeah. Even though America wanted just the tip, maybe. Yeah. 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 But they so they they let Canada have the whole thing. It's in the it's yeah. in the treaty. <laughs> sure. It's a provision made. <laughs> That America will not get just, just a tip. Just a tip, mm-hmm. yeah. Not this time. The provision in this treaty that mm-hmm. has it wrap around Vancouver Island is terribly worded. Oh. So the exact wording of the treaty is the line of boundary between the territories of the United States and those of Her Britannic Majesty oh. shall be continued westward along the said 49th parallel of north latitude to the middle of the channel which separates the continent from Vancouver's island and thence southler- southerly through the middle of the said channel and of Fuca's Strait to the Pacific Ocean. Hmm. So pop quiz. What does that mean? Well, I don't, first of all, I don't like their tone. In this. <laughs> I don't like that they're saying like, uh, between the United States, a country, and the royal, glorious, <laughs> eternal glory of Britain, who still has a crown, uh, ex- floating over America at all, at all times. It sounds like, I, I feel like I know what the border is. I've, I've seen it on a map. I've yeah. seen how it's cut out there. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like they draw the line until it hits the water. I mean, they should just draw a line around the island, and they tried to make language that said it's equidistant between the lands that it's cutting, right? Yes. Is that and what it's that's, trying to do? And that's essentially what the problem is, mm-hmm. is it says it'll wrap around the island. It will go down the, uh, the, the channel. Yeah. So the channel between Vancouver Island and the mainland. Channel. Singular. Oh, no, there's... The proposed change in the border says it will go right through the San Juan Islands, where there are many channels. Yeah, there are only channels and right. some islands. Yeah, lots of channels. Yeah. The islands make the channels. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so running the border along the northerly Harrow Strait on the northern side of the San Juan Islands mm-hmm. will make the San Juan Islands part of the United States. Good. While running the border along the southerly Rosario Strait south of the San Juan Islands will put the islands under British control. Not good. Yeah. So it just says channel channel singular, but it doesn't stipulate which channel. So they were only thinking about the one island, even though there's a ton out there? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's that's problematic. So it's only stipulating that the Vancouver Island will be part of Canada, mm-hmm. but it doesn't make any allotments for these other fairly large islands. So the line gets drawn around there. Vancouver Island, and, they're just like, and then figure it out, mm-hmm. but there's a whole rest of the, of the ocean they have to reach. And islands in between. Well, the it, you, when you're going across the 49th parallel, you'd go through the San Juans first, and then 
through the Strait of Juan de Fuca oh, out of the Pacific yeah, yeah. Ocean. So it would just so we don't really have to worry so much about what's going on out of the Pacific That's Ocean right. out okay, westward. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so there's there's a whole bunch of islands though in in the in the Salish Sea. Uh, I'm convinced whatever whatever guy wrote this didn't didn't see it. He didn't know what it looked like, mm-hmm. right? He says there's a big old turd shaped island that he <laughs> wants for Canada, and we're gonna draw the line to it and draw all around it. Yes, yeah. that's, that's theirs. Yeah. So the two nations make an agreement, and the agreement was we'll figure it out later. God, that again. Yeah. So they they <laughs> decide to push it back, but for the time being, uh, the British consider San Juan Islands to be part of Canada, and the U.S. considers them to be part of the United States. To this day, the end. <laughs> uh, and I'm kind of using British and Canadian interchangeably at this point. Yeah. Canada was controlled by the British Empire. And they won't mind. They, mm-hmm. It was all pretty peaceful until the end with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, enter the Hudson's Bay Company. Mm-mm. The Hudson's Bay Company was a Canadian fur trading giant and at one time the largest private land owner in the world. They what? owned 15% of North America. What? Yeah. That's 15% of any body of land is a lot of land to own. Mm, 15% of a continent? Of a continent. Is a lot of land, yeah. Oh. They were the de facto government in many parts of the frontier. There's just too many parts that aren't, that are them. Yeah. You can't be on land that's not theirs, therefore they're the government. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Uh, Hudson's Bay Company, huge, 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 huge. Uh, still around. And this was the, yeah, they have, they have department stores, don't they? Yeah, they do. I think they do a lot of financial stuff these yeah. days and a lot of other enterprises. But yeah, Hudson's Bay Company still exists. So they have like a 15% share of like a downtown block for a store maybe or their offices, but they don't own all. They don't own the whole thing? Do, I don't know. Do they? Do they still I, own 15% I, of North America? They don't own 15% of North America okay. anymore. But you I don't know, think they're that, you don't they're that think? big anymore. I don't think so. Okay. I'm, I think they're still a multi-billion dollar corporation though they're at so, this point and it's so canadian to be so quiet about it that we're like <laughs> we're huge but we're over here uh the hudson's bay company was not happy about the oregon treaty mm-hmm. between the 49th parallel and the columbia river so it's now washington state hey so, yeah columbia river now separates washington from oregon yeah uh they were virtually the only non-native presence uh they had outposts and trade routes well established along the puget sound and they were furious that this area was now a part of america and not canada yeah mm-hmm. well we figured it out later they had 20 what years to figure out and, and say they wanted it? uh 28 years between yeah. 1818 and 1846 so it's on them you think so i think so yeah they had time to, to stomp their feet and say it's theirs but yeah. they didn't Oh, well, apparently, uh, 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 initially, not apparently, initially, uh, America was trying to gobble up all of British Columbia as well. And when James K. Polk ran for president in 1844, that was one of his big things, was let's get all of that, uh, 5440 or fight. That, yes, okay, yes, mm-hmm. I've heard that, that's why, okay. Which great. is 5440 or fight is a not super art, articulate way of yeah. saying let's grab up that whole area. And that's there. why it didn't work, I think. Mm-hmm. It wasn't catchy enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You gotta work on the branding of that. Yeah, exactly. You can get a pop song out of your head for, for weeks at a time. Yeah. But if you got that if you get the right slogan, then, then it, there it is. Yeah, it's no yes we can. Or something else. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they thought it was a matter of course, the Hudson's Bay Company thought it was a matter of course, that the San Juan Islands should be included as a part of Canada and had no interest in seeing any more land ceded to the Americans. Cool. Which makes sense. This is a lot of them waving their arms about saying, well, obviously, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. But both sides, I think, are going to start doing this. I'm imagining a lot of mustache twirling at yeah. this point. And, mm-hmm. well, and gesturing and sort of making a frowny face saying, you know, you, this is mine. Mm-hmm. This is ob- yes. obvious. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As you reach for, I imagine, either a pen or a dagger. Oh, yes. Yeah. Or a pen dagger. Oh. One side pen, one side dagger. Which side am I going to use? You don't know. Don't fall asleep mm-hmm. while you're writing. Mm-hmm. Go in your ear. In 1853, okay. James Douglas, the governor of the Crown Colony of British Columbia. Not that. Just, it's British Columbia. Drop your crown already. It, it's, it's the British Columbia and the Crown Colony of British Columbia. It's, there's, there's distinctions. Okay. They, ch- they, it changes a little bit. But they just, they, they're rubbing that crown in your face pretty hard. You, you don't like the, the monarch undertones no. of this, the Crown Colony of British Columbia? I, I mean, I get mm. it, but shut up. Mm hmm. So James Douglas, the governor of the Crown Colony of British Columbia, as well as the head of the Hudson's Bay Company in Victoria, uh, ordered that a sheep ranch and farm be constructed on the southernmost tip of San Juan Island. 
He's a powerful guy, this guy. He's the governor, and he is, he's working for the Hudson's... He's a high-ranking member of the Hudson's Bay Company. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it sounds like he's actually more powerful in his private job in the Hudson Bay's company than he is with the actual political job. There's a little bit of a conflict of interest there. I think it's perfectly aligned. <laughs> I think it's the same interests. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the, it's, the, it's the trees and lands and furs that yeah. you're chewing up and selling. Mm-hmm. And now we're going to take the islands by saying, well, we got... Basically, if I lick the southern tip of this island, then the whole thing is ours. That's that's essentially what he's trying to do yeah, here. Dibsies, yeah, Dibsies, sure. Yeah, and there's there's the San Juan Islands, and then there's San Juan Islands. So San Juan Island is one of the islands in the San Juans, yeah. and they're all named the San Juan Islands, and there's one San Juan yeah, Island. like the big island in Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii. yeah, exactly, sure. exactly. And the whole archipelago is named after that one island. And both of these sets of islands also, I think, had the let's wait and figure it out attitude towards the naming, right? You picked one, that's San Juan, what about the rest? Yeah, we'll, we'll get to them. Yeah. Right? Hawaii and the It's like your capelago de San Juan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what about the other ones? I don't know. We'll, we'll name them later. <laughs> but this one's mine, and they all are mine, too. Uh, Charles, Gon- uh, Charles John Griffin is charged with running the farm, which he names Bellevue. Uh, in addition, yeah, Bellevue, B-E-L-L-E space V-U-E. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. We said that word already on this. We did say that word oh, already. Oh, no. Call from, back. Am I from a Canadian sheep farm? You might be. No, I'm yeah. not. No. Yes, you're You're from a Canadian sheep farm. I'm sorry. Uh, in addition to sheep and seeds, they also brought along some pigs. Oh, so, mm-hmm. that's a fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like for, for farming or just, you know. For, for farming. <laughs> not, not for partying. Yeah, I got some, some party pigs. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, party pigs. With little outfits. That would be adorable, yeah. but I don't think that's really what they were going for. And I'm also picturing a cartoon pig and not like a big, gross pig. Yeah. Which These were was. like boars. Yeah, These they're were pretty giant, hardy pigs. Who mm-hmm. are fed on like seafood. That sounds delicious. Right? Seafood fed pigs. How good would that be? It's like a bacon wrapped scallop, right? Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Oh. I'd eat that. I think yeah. we should go set up a sheep farm. Yeah. Okay. The southern tip Well, of... you're from a sheep farm. I'm so... not from a sheep farm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, in 1853, Washington becomes its own territory. Uh, so it breaks off from the Oregon Territory. That Washington time. becomes yeah. its own territory. So and cool. representatives are sent to the farm on San Juan Island to try to collect custom duties on the Hudson's Bay Company for bringing farm animals into the U.S. Oh, oh no. Hold, hold on a second. So the... The America is still considering the San Juan Islands part of America. The yeah. British are still considering the San Juan Islands to be British. But now that the Americans saw them, they know they're there. Yeah. Even though the movement of animals happened, it sounds like a little while ago, mm-hmm. months or whatever it was. Yeah. They're saying, now we're a state, and now you've moved your stuff into well, it's our all, state. It's all kind of happening at the same time. So okay. all of this is stuff is the, the they're moving the farm onto the land, and they say, oh, there's a farm there. Let's go collect duty because they're bringing farm animals into the United yeah. States. If there's one thing farmers around that time liked a lot, it was unannounced visits from the government yeah. of an opposing nation asking for your money. I think that's something that unites farmers of <laughs> all farmer. of all all types. They love throughout that. time. Yeah. Is that that's something that they really unannounced visits from government officials demanding money yeah. they didn't think they needed to pay. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, no. That, I mean, all I say is that pig had better be in a really cute outfit to turn them <laughs> away. Otherwise this is gonna be bad. Mm-hmm. The Hudson's Bay Company do not acknowledge the San Juan Islands as part of the US and refuse to pay. Charles, gone, uh, Charles John Griffin, the head of the farm, was threatened with arrest but does not yield. The customs officials threaten to sell the sheep at auction in order to pay the tax bill. Oh. So they say, we're going to take your sheep, we're going to sell them at auction. Yeah. By 1854, the San Juan Islands have been incorporated into Whatcom County, Washington. Yes. Uh, Washington Territory. However, the British still consider them to be part of Canada, and so the sheriff of Whatcom visits Bellevue to demand the Hudson's Bay Company pay taxes on their farm. Again, Griffin refused. Yeah. So they're trying to get duty. They couldn't get duty for importing it in, so they're trying to get taxes, and now they can't get taxes. So they had auditors visit the first time? Or somebody like some sort of... Officials came yeah. in, yeah. It wasn't right. a sheriff. Customs officials. Okay. Customs and they, officials, and now it's the sheriff. They upgraded a sheriff. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to have two sheriffs, and then they can't try anymore, right? That's all they can do is you can send two sheriffs, but well, that's about it. Well, so here's what happened. Some weeks later, the sheriff returned to the farm late at night oh. with a small armada of boats oh, no. piloted by Whatcom County farmers. He then quietly rounded up 50 sheep and attempted to auction them off under cover of darkness, all while staying quiet enough <laughs> to not draw attention from the Bellevue farmers. <laughs> 
So they're like by candlelight in boats. Like, oh, how, how much for this? $100, $101. Are you crazy? I'm not paying. Shh, 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 shh. Yeah. And it's windy and the candles are blowing out. Yeah. And there's a mad Canadian just over yonder yes. who will shoot you if he knows you're there. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Exactly. All and right. just the idea of trying to quietly round up 50 sheep. Yeah. Is insane. Quiet, yeah. First of all, sheep don't like to be quiet, right? <laughs> They're loud. That quiet is their natural enemy. <laughs> yeah, they, they hate quiet. And then to have all the farmers be, you know, uh, it's 50 farmers all bidding on different numbers of sheep. Well, there's a, there's a bunch of farmers. I don't have, there's, they, they round up about 50 sheep. I don't know how many farmers there are, but there's a fair amount of farmers. Okay. Because they would say, hey, if you have an auction like that, you have make, you make it known. You put up public notices. And yeah. so, Come take this boat, take your small boat uh-huh. out to this island, but uh-huh. be quiet because yeah. we're going to abduct these sheep and auction them off. It's a sleepover auction. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. I mm-hmm. get it now. <laughs> Griffin, arri- or Griffin arrived on the scene as the Whatcom County farmers were attempting to load their purchases, rams mostly, into small rowboats and single person sailboats. Wait, wait. I just realized why did they do the auction on his side of the water? Why didn't they take the sheep back across to the safety of their own farms and split them up? You should have been there. I should have been there. You should have been there. You were raised on a sheep farm. You know how these things go. I know how to sneak sheep out of Canadian farms. I'm not sure. I don't know if they couldn't get a boat big enough for 50 sheep or what what the deal was. But yeah, they they did the auction on the beach near the farm yeah. where they abducted the sheep in the middle of the night. It might have been like the lawlessness of the time. Nobody trusted nobody. You don't trust a guy to take, yeah, I'm going to take these five sheep and then give them back to the auction. Mm. And he just, you know, paddles faster. Now Maybe. His sheep, I guess. Nobody trusts anybody. Yeah. But now there's nations involved. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they were trying to get their rams into rowboats and single-person sailboats and were being met with limited success, mm-hmm. as as you would. Mm-hmm. Uh, Griffin tried to stop them from departing, but the Americans were well-armed. Of course they were. Of course were. they were. Of course they mm-hmm. were. Uh, no shots were fired, but Bellevue Farm was now down 34 sheep. Ooh. Completely infuriated, Griffin reported the incident to Governor Douglas back in Victoria. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who's just clucked his tongue and said, too bad. Ah, uh, yeah. And then rolled himself up in 30 blankets that he <laughs> owns, because that's what that company makes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the U.S. Secretary of State, William Marcy, wrote a letter to territorial, ter- ter- territorial Governor Isaac Stevens telling him to cease any and all antagonizing of British subjects on San Juan Island until the ter- dis- territory dispute was settled. Mm-hmm. So the Secretary of State says, stop harassing these farmers. Just yeah. let them be. Yeah. And you can't get much farther geographically from Washington, yes. uh, D.C., mm-hmm. than like this little sliver of of islands. We also didn't have a transcontinental railroad back then. Yeah. So, and the communication wasn't quite what it was, so it would take a long time for messages to get over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how does the Secretary of State get a message there before they just all kill each other? Well, they, they things also are moving kind of slowly. This, okay. is, this is over the period of years that this is okay. all happening. So this is 1853 this is happening. Um, so... Representatives from the U.S. and Great Britain uh, met, but were unable to reach a compromise on who had control of the islands. Many officer, many offers were made, but neither side was willing to budge. In the summer of 1858, 12 years after the Oregon Treaty was signed, the issue of the San Juan Islands still wasn't settled. Mm-hmm. And a group of about 20 American miners settled on San Juan Island not far from Bellevue. Uh-oh. So there's a bunch of Americans now living there. The American miners had just returned to the U.S. from looking for gold in the Fraser River in British Columbia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They felt that they had been horribly mistreated by the Canadians during their time in Canada and hated Canadians and Governor Douglas in particular. Oh. So they'd been looking for gold and there were, there were claim differences, there were tax differences, so yeah. they were not happy with how things went when they were in Canada. It's the sheep thing, but with nuggets happening above nuggets. the border. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nuggets and nuggets and rocks and things. And these are also guys who, uh, their whole life is like, Calloused, right? They've got their their hands are rough. They work with rocks. These are hardy, they're mean, hardworking dudes. men. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. now you've got this fluffy sheep farmer who <laughs> is a perfect target, and they have him cut off from the rest of Canada. Yeah. Should he try to flee mm-hmm. or uh, or get word out that he's being antagonized, despite the best wishes of the American government. Upon hearing that Americans have settled on the island, Governor Douglas mm-hmm. from British Columbia. 
announce, or authorizes Griffin to intimidate and warn off the settlers in any way he deems fit, oh, so as to maintain British authority on the island. It's the pigs then, right? Well, we'll, we'll get there. It's the, send we'll the pigs get there. in like little suits. Oh, <laughs> they mean business, and they're so cute. Mm-hmm. So we have a group of Canadians who hate Americans, and a group of Americans who hate Canadians living on a disputed island. And nowhere to go but at each other. Nowhere to go but at each other. Because I believe, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but an island is, is water on all sides, right? Yes, it's, it's, a piece, it's defined as a piece of land surrounded by water on all sides. That's, okay. a, that's an island. And a peninsula is three sides. Yes. And what's an isthmus? An isthmus is uh, it's a, it's, it's a, like a little spit uh-huh. with a bigger piece of land on the other side. How do you say that word? Isthmus? Isthmus? I think it's isthmus. Isthmus? Isthmus. I-S-T-H-M. Isthmus. Isthmus. Okay, I'm going to call it isthmus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please do. That's not really relevant to... This, because there's yeah. no, I don't think there's an isthmus up there. Well, enough sheep, you can make an isthmus. You can, yes. So, uh, Lyman Cutler. Mm-hmm. Lyman Cutler was one of the American miners who arrived on San Juan Island. Uh, he arrived in 1859 to claim a homestead. Mm-hmm. He built a small home about a mile north of Bellevue. Did he dig a hole in the ground? <laughs> Is that what, how he makes houses? I think he built a built a structure and lived to live in. But it's a hole, right? Homestead. Yeah, a hole instead He's a miner. He knows how to dig. He can't make something. Oh, above. you're making a miner joke. No, I, that's, I think he's good at it. I think he knows oh, how to make a hole and I'm, support it. I, I think he would have been competent at hole digging. Okay. Uh, but I think he also would have been able to build a house. So he built a he built a he built himself a home and with a basement. I I don't know if there was a basement. He probably or not. had a basement. Okay, he had a basement. Yes. Uh, moving on. Uh, so he built a small home about a mile north of Bellevue where he tended a small farm. Uh, the farm was not fenced in, and it became a common nuisance for the pigs from Bellevue to come and dig in his potato patch. Oh, nobody digs on his land. He digs on his he land. He digs on his He's land. He's the digger. Yeah. He went to Griffin to complain, but nothing was done, no. unsurprisingly. On June 15th, 1859, a pig returned to his potato patch. Lyman Cutler, fed up, shot and killed the pig. Oh, no. He went to Griffin immediately and told him what happened, and even offered to pay for the pig. And cook it. And cook it. And feed it back to him. <laughs> Griffin demanded $100 for the animal, which is, it's about $3,000 in today's money. And how much are pigs today in today's money? Less than $3,000. Are you sure? A lot. Less. Yes, I'm positive. Okay. I eat pig fairly regularly. Well, I know. You eat part of a pig. I do, but I don't think the part of a pig, based on what I pay, if you put all the that much pig into a whole pig, yeah. it would I'm guessing be three thousand dollars. We probably eat the most expensive parts of pigs. Right. It's not uh, like in, they don't in theory. Yeah, they don't mm-hmm. like keep they don't throw away the expensive parts and sell you the cheap parts. Bacon probably costs more than the hoof. Probably. Probably. Mm-hmm. But I still think pigs are expensive. It's not not three thousand dollars for one pig? No, but like how much is bacon? It's only a sliver bacon of the is pig. Like Six to eight dollars for a package of bacon? Yeah, but like a pulled pork sandwich is like seven bucks. Mm -hmm. So how many pulled pork sandwiches are in one pig? Less than three thousand dollars (laughs) worth. Okay. So it's definitely a hundred so he's asking a ton of money for this pig, which not what the pig is worth. That's spite hog money right there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The old spite hog. Give me a million dollars for that. Yeah. Okay. Because he wants to fight. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Cutler refused and Griffin threatened uh, refused to pay and Griffin threatened to arrest him and take him back to Victoria to stand trial. What? Yeah. Oh, because he thinks he's on... Yeah, he thinks he's in Canada. He can arrest a guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cutler was not arrested, but the incident riled up the other Americans on the island. Sure. July 4th, 1859. Oh, no, but his emotions are high or anything. Independence Day. <laughs> Two and a half weeks after Cutler shot the pig, 14 of the American settlers, nearly all the Americans on the island at the time went to a hill located above the Bellevue headquarters and raised the American flag atop a 55-foot flagpole. And that's what that photo is. Was The, 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 the hill was called Iwo Jima, right? <laughs> that's later. That's yeah. later in history. Oh, is that Much later this later. year? Mm-hmm. But it's illegal for them to raise a flag because it's the disputed territory. It's still, and people are still crazy about flags at this point in yes. history. It's, that's what, that's people what are crazy about flags now. People, are, people take flags very seriously back sure. then and today. You know what? I got yelled at. Uh, I was at Gasworks Park for Fourth of July, mm-hmm. and I had brought an American flag, and I um, I was not lighting it up at night. I had rolled it up on a pole, and mm-hmm. it wasn't on the ground, but I was sort of was holding it. And uh, and a and a and a guy came up and yelled at me for not lighting up uh, the American flag, and handed me duct tape 
to tape my flashlight to the bottom of the flagpole so it would illuminate, it would light up the, the he flag. Was, he was serious? He was very serious. I thought you were going to say you let it touch the ground, and I was like, no, yes, I would be upset about that. I know better than that. that. No, but... I know that rule, and I did. I had rolled it up, and it was standing upright like a big like a big pole, and it was huh. not even you know flapping in the wind, and no, he was not happy. Yeah, so... people take flags very seriously. So yeah. this is a big deal yeah. that they're raising a flag on a 55-foot flagpole. Well, on 55 on... feet, that's a tough. you got to anchor that, right? It's got to be underground somehow. How did they dig a hole... They were they were miners. Oh, they, they knew. Were miners. Oh, they knew mm-hmm. how. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, once the flag was raised, they fired their guns into the air in celebration, proud of themselves for not bending to Canadian threats. Oh, and this is how the national anthem was written. You're you're kind of jumping around in history here. <laughs> well, that was way earlier. Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. That's yeah, the flag they're talking about. It is the flag, kind of. It's I the mean, flag. Yeah. There's there's more stars on it now. Yeah. Francis Scott Key, that they named Key Arena after, right? It's all... Wow. Yeah, yeah everything's coming together, isn't it's it? It's all perfect. Mm-hmm. I yeah. know it all. So they're firing their guns into the air. One of their bullets accidentally penetrated the flag. Oh, come on, guys. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Did they blame it on, on the other guy? He shot our flag! <laughs> Get him! No, they didn't. I think they kind of chalked it up to these things happen yeah. in their drunken Fourth of July revelry. Flags get shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Later that week... The flag was still flying and was taken notice of by U.S. General William S. Harney, who was taking a ship from Victoria where he had just met with Governor Douglas about unrelated matters. Harney... What what else are they talking about besides there's these islands we're super fighting over, but... They're not really super fighting over them, though. Okay. I mean, it's a disputed territory and they're they're in talks about it, but it's really just this handful of people on this island kind of... It's 15 people. It's it's a little more than that. It's it's maybe forty people, but it's not a lot of people. Yeah. So it's not really a huge deal yet. Right. Yet. But they're talking about unrelated matters. Mm-hmm. What what is above the, the on the list of things? What are they ta- what are they talking about? Well there's I don't know, they're diplomatic issues. Use use the metric system. No. Okay, I'll see you next week. <laughs> Sail home safe. So uh Harney, who's who's sailing from Victoria, sees the flag flying. General Harney? Uh, General Harney, U.S. General William S. Harney. Uh, he went ashore to ask about the flag, and since he knew that this was still a disputed region and no American flag should be flying here, mm-hmm. the American settlers told Harney what had happened and he was sympathetic, as he himself loathed, loathed, loathed the British. It's Smiths. It's Smiths, yeah. But they're just, they're, they're just butthurt that the guy asked for 3,000 local dollars for a pig? Yeah. No one actually, like, they got a pig, right? They got to, did they get to keep the pig? I don't know what happened to the pig. Okay, but they got to shoot a pig. They got to, Lyman Cutler got to shoot a pig. You got to shoot a pig. And that guy's like, give me three thousand, give me a hundred dollars. No, and that's and then he's like, I feel sorry for you guys that you had to listen to him ask you for a hundred dollars. Yeah, no, that's what he- so he so Harney told the American settlers to write a petition asking for army troops to back them up. What? Because their feelings are hurt. But because the U.S. Army couldn't send troops to the island to fight the British, that would be a violation of the treaty. He told them to lie and say they were being attacked by Indians. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, well, that's, I mean, I guess that's not actually going to hurt any of the local native populations, right? Hopefully. Well, there... Or is the army going to come marching through and be like, there, there they are, kill them. And these these natives have no idea that they're being uh, uh, hunted by the army. What? If you're calling in the army to go after local Indians... Well, there is a defense defense measure. So saying, oh, come in okay. to defend... Send the army to defend yourselves against... Yeah, how don't you get asshole soldiers, though, being like every Indian on the way? It's, is it you? Were you harassing them on that island? Isn't it going to cause problems of the, the path to the island by the army? They're going to be mad at Indians for no good reason? Well, we'll find out. There was also... The, I mean, there was the Indian War in 1855, so there was a lot of conflicts already going on between okay. the army and and the native population. Now, there's a catchphrase, though. Chalk it up to Indians! Yeah! That's what they said a lot then. And that's that's something, yeah. See, that caught on. At 5440, no. There's too many numbers. <laughs> too many numbers. People don't like numbers. Yeah. People like flags. They don't like numbers. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Harney then accepted their petition... So they wrote him a petition saying mm-hmm. we're being attacked by Indians. They gave it to him. He said, I accept this pe- petition. Despite knowing to that the it contrary. was false. Yeah. Uh, for, so for the petition for U.S. troops to stave off Indian attacks and ordered Captain George Pickett, the commanding officer of Fort Bellingham, to move his infantry to San Juan Island. Pickett had graduated last in his class at West Point. 
So he's sent from from Bellingham to the island. Before that, he's sent from West Point to the, the farthest fort. The fort. frontier, yeah. Get out of here, you suck. His first order of business was to post a proc- proclamation around the island that said, This being United States territory, Uh-oh. no laws other than those of the United States, no nor courts except such as are held by virtue of said law, will be recognized or allowed on this island. How you like me now, last in my class, what? <laughs> this my island. Yeah, exactly. Island kick ass. <laughs> me. It's Pickett <laughs> Island. I'm the general. Poor guy. He doesn't sound like a very good general. He's not. Well, he's a captain. Oh, okay. So he's a captain. Well, he's a captain, yeah. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Back in Canada, the rear admiral of the naval fleet of Victoria was away on business. You are you doing it, though. You said back in Canada, but this island is still Canada. Why are you taking the U.S.'s side already? Uh, I'm biased, I think. Okay. I'm biased to what I know is going to happen. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I hate when that happens. Mm-hmm. So back in Canada, the rear admiral of the naval fleet of Victoria was away on business, meaning the acting commander of the Navy was Governor James Douglas. What doesn't he do? Yeah. If the flag ever gets uh, hurt, he has to climb up the flagpole <laughs> and wave his arms around. <laughs> He's the Canadian flag. Yeah. Uh, he was furious about the proclamation. You don't say. Not, yeah, no shock there. He ordered troops to the scene, led by Captain Jeffrey Hornby. Uh, three British naval ships with hundreds of Marines show up, and Hornby lands on the island and tries to convince Pickett to leave the island, as he was not under jurisdiction to occupy the island. But neither is he. They're both occupying the island. He's not. Well, he's a, he's landed on the island, but his troops are still on the ship. Uh-huh. He's ordered to land his troops on the island. Hornby decides not to land his Marines on the island under fear that would simply escalate matters. So Hornby denies his orders. Mm -hmm. He refuses his orders because he says, if I land hundreds of Marines on this island where these Americans are all riled up, yeah. It's not going to be a good situation. It's going to be a battle. Right. Yeah. So he's... And the Americans have had time to dig holes. (laughs) Then they're going to be in those holes. You have a strange hole obsession, don't you? <laughs> I, mean, you just, I think they're using it to their advantage. They're well, miners, aren't they? Yeah, they are miners. Yeah. A lot of them are miners. But now the army's there. Sure. So the army's there, and then there's a bunch of naval ships that are hanging out. Uh, but Hornby refuses to land his troops. Okay. So Harney, remember Harney, the British-hating general? Yeah. Who ordered troops on the island in the first place? Mm-hmm. He had no reservations about escalating matters. Oh. So he orders more infantry troops to the San Juan Islands. Uh, American reinforcements arrived, bring a total of about 500 men. So 500 Americans, and you said about 300 British are in their boats not coming well, on the island? Yeah, there's about 300, 300 officer, British officers on their ships. Oh, okay. And then there's 500 American officers, or Brit- officer, uh, 500 American troops on the island itself. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So he lands them on the island in full view of the British ships, uh, who's led by Captain Hornby, and Hornby is still exercising the restraint not to engage and trusting that diplomacy will prevail. But Harney's ordering all of his soldiers to come in with their trousers around their knees, just butt naked, for emphasis, right? Uh, I actually, I don't have that in my notes. I'm, but reading, maybe... I'm reading your notes. Oh, okay. It says right That's there. what it says you right there. You drew a picture of, a, of, a, of the penis of a soldier. Uh, I, I didn't. I, okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Prove, prove you didn't. I can't prove I you didn't. You can't. I can't. Prove that I didn't do that. And that's why America always wins. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, the American soldiers settled in and set up camp for the long haul. Attracted by the presence of soldiers, cottage industries of saloons and brothels begin popping up around camp. Mm -hmm. Uh, This brought in civilians, and soon a lawless vibe was permeating throughout the San Juan Islands. It's, It's an army party. It is an army party. It's just like, hey, there's some soldiers. They got some coins. And there's a bunch of holes that aren't being used. Let's drop some whores down these holes and pay entry to yeah. to have some whore hole time. And there's still the pigs in their outfits who are ready, who are down <laughs> down to party, down they're, to party. They're the bouncers, so. I think. Yeah, don't touch my girls. <laughs> so this is in this is in July. Uh, it wasn't until September that news of the conflict reached Washington D.C. and London. Brother, the leaders of both countries were shocked to find they were on the brink of war on the far side of the world. Mm-hmm. President James Buchanan ordered the reduction of troops from the island and that the British troops be allowed to land. So he said, let's get some of these Americans off of here. Let the British troops land. Do not engage with them. What? Mm Mm-hmm. He also sent General Winfield Scott to take command. General Scott was 73 years old, obese, barely mobile, and had the gout. 
I've heard that name before. Did he use something better than this? General Winfield Scott? Yeah. I don't know, maybe. Hmm. I can't think of anything better than being a big fat guy who can't walk <laughs> going to save an island <laughs> so some Canadian pigs can live there. <laughs> It's probably his crown and glory, yeah, wow. but it works fine. When you put it like that, <laughs> this is not really how I am I view this story. Hey, you but... fat guy, go save those Canadian pigs from our harassing soldiers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened, I think. Over and over again, these guys are demonstrating they don't actually care. The people who don't live here don't care. Yeah. We'll figure it out later. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's a war? I'm going to send the worst guy I have to go Well, he was it. very experienced. I don't know if he was the worst guy, but he was he was not doing... He was towards the end of his life, and he was not doing well. Well, he's also super wise. fat, and he has the gout. Mm-hmm. And 73, it's going to take him two years to get out there. <laughs> well, General Winfield Scott, when he got there, uh, when he arrived in San Juan Harbor, he never went ashore. He ma- remained on the ship the whole time and communicated his negotiations either by mail or by sending aides. Because he ate so much that he filled up the cabin and just was the exact shape of his cabin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something like but that. With little tiny gout feet sticking out the window. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like those watermelons they grow in jars. Yeah, so that yeah. it's like a square shaped watermelon. Or the cats they do that with. Yeah, that's, that was a hoax though. Yeah. Yeah. A hoax, a ho- lot of fun. <laughs> Uh, the British troops were allowed to land on the island and also settled in for the long haul. Hornby uh, was commended by for his uh, Hornby was commended by his superiors for refusing orders and not escalating the situation. Wow! So when the when the admiral came back and he said, "No, you did good you for did not right for not for not escalating the situation and when, denying that order." When does that happen? You disobeyed a direct order. Good on you, chap. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this is in 1859. Okay. Negotiations begin over who should have proper control over the islands. Uh, but agreements still can't be reached. In 1861, the Civil War breaks out. Yeah, I was gonna, maybe that's what's distracting everybody, is yes. that the whole country might get torn into. There's into. a lot going on on the other side of the country Who cares right now? about whore mm-hmm. whole island? Mm-hmm. Captain Pickett, uh, last in his class at West Point, yeah, I remember. resigned his post to go fight for the Confederacy. Oh, of course he did. He was from the South. <laughs> oh, man. Mm-hmm. He really sucks. Yeah. I'm not a big, not a big picket fan. Yeah. I'm not a big picket fan. Uh, see, the occupation of the small chain of islands 3,000 miles away doesn't seem like a huge priority for the U.S. government anymore, which is further stalling the negotiations. Yeah. So for years... Both American and British soldiers lived on the island in peace, oh. drinking and eating together, and by 1867, Canada had gained independence from Great Britain, and the joint occupation continues. So we get into a conflict with one country, we're in the conflict for so long that they become a different country what? over this time period. So do those the soldiers on that island become Canadian then? Are these now Canadian soldiers? These would be Canadian soldiers now. It's not... Okay, okay. It's not like there's three countries involved now where they're, they're a cut off section of British soldiers. Mm-hmm. And now they're, okay. So it's Canadians and us, uh, dipping into holes to either meet a cool pig or have a whore <laughs> or have a drink or all three. Yes. Okay, good. So there's a lot going on. Yeah. Uh, by 1872, the two countries have agreed to arbitration from a third party. So they say, we can't settle this ourselves. They go to a third party. Oh, is it Britain? The party they chose? Kaiser Wilhelm. No, <laughs> it's so much worse. The Emperor of Germany. Yeah, who's mm-hmm. just making well, a name. This is the first Kaiser Wilhelm. Yeah. So this isn't the one from World War One. This oh, is his okay. his father. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So the Emperor of Germany steps in and he says, "I will be the one who decides." You might as well. He's never been there. He's he's totally third party. He, well, he's completely right? impartial. In yeah. This. Yeah. So, as opposed to asking the the crown's arb- arbiter. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the emperor puts together a committee who decides the islands rightfully belong to the United States. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Citing what grounds, Well, Kaiser? the stipulation of the treaty said that it should wrap around Vancouver Island, and it didn't stipulate the other islands. Yeah. So that would mean that the other islands in that archipelago and in that area of the Salish Sea... Uh, would be United States. Gotcha. It, it does. It does establish exactly what strait because there are some small islands off 
the coast yeah. of Vancouver that are a part of Canada. So it just establishes basically where the border is, but the San Juan Islands are a part of the United States. Okay, and it's the wrap around, right? It doesn't say the line goes straight down or, or whatever. Right, it, yeah. it, it wraps around. Yes, exactly. Okay. So yeah. there's, a, there's a whole bunch of islands in that area. So the Kaiser of Germany takes one look and goes, well, that word right there, that's obviously, it's done. This is the United States Islands. Well, he puts together a committee, and the committee, okay. the committee decides. There was some stalling, but yeah, ultimately the committee decided. Both countries begin to withdraw their troops, and the last American soldier leaves the island in 1874, 15 years after the day Cutler shot the pig. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Uh, This long and bizarre standoff has since been dubbed the Pig War. The Pig War? That's okay. There were not as many pigs in that story as that (laughs) name suggests. It should have been no humans could set foot on the island uh, at the risk of violating the treaty, so they sent pigs at each other who were wrapped in explosives. War. The war, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly. not, not, as, not as brief. No. Uh, pig war has more of a catch to it. But the pigs Catchier were there catching. the whole time. The pigs were there. Well, there, the pig was the only fatality. <gasps> You're right. No one died over the, course of the, over the course of the conflict. It was settled entirely through diplomacy, uh, reluctant diplomacy. Yeah. But yeah, the pig was the only death over the period of the conflict. And, I mean, how many wars can say that the only thing that died in this war was also then deliciously consumed? Yeah. And yeah. the only thing that was hurt was feelings. Okay. <laughs> And a pig, you can't say and that. And a pig, yeah, that's very true, yeah. Don't forget pig's feelings, because they're, they're biding their time now. Pig feelings? That's going to be Pig Island someday. I feel like pig feelings is like, you get the bacon, you get the pork chops, and you get the pig feeling. Like, yeah. That's, which, that's the expensive part of the pig. You know when you finish a whole bunch of pork product, and you feel kind of loopy and sweaty? Those are pig feelings. Yeah. <laughs> that's the pig mm-hmm. war. And of course, news of this uh, reaches a joyous United States who is eagerly awaiting and anticipating news of what's going to happen to the San Juan Islands. I think most people don't even know this is going on at this point. Because all of this is, I mean, this is, the whole thing was settled later, but all of this is so overshadowed by the Civil War. Yeah. As it should be, because that's a much more significant event in history. A lot more big repercussions and things like that from that than this. See, I I disagree. You really? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I disagree. I would love to hear why. Because there was no, there's no tension in the Civil War, right? It's all just happening. But the Pig War, you've got this tension of like, I'm going to go get a drink with this guy. We might share a whore later. <laughs> Look, that pig is wearing a hat. Uh, is he going to kill me when I sleep? The pig? No, this, well, maybe, I don't know, but the soldier across from me. Yeah, I think you have a much, much better chance of dying in the Civil War. Yeah, but you're more afraid in the Pig War. I don't think you are. I don't think anybody was more afraid in the Pig War than they were in the Civil War. Well, the pigs at least were. And I think the soldiers have a weird Mm -hmm. tension, and I don't think you're talking about it. (laughs) I think the pigs were going to die anyway. Yeah. I think that pig was destined for slaughter. Okay, well, if we're going to do that, we're all going to die someday. (laughs) That's true. So that's what that is. A chilling tale of things to come. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A Pig War. One thing I like to think about when 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 I read about this or study about this is... How sweet would it be to be a U.S. Army officer and to be stationed during the Civil War in the San Juan Islands? Yes. On one of the most beautiful places in the world, seeing orca whales swimming by, hanging out with the enemy on the same island who you're not in a violent conflict with, as opposed to dying in the fields a guy you in trained Virginia. with is having his feet rot out from under him in some boots in right. Georgia. And instead, you're sitting on the beach by a campfire, hanging out with a pig in a top hat. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty good it's a pretty good situation to be in. It is, and I can't believe that nobody pulled those troops for other uses then. When it was like, oh, you're just sitting out there drinking and whoring? <laughs> it's time to come fight the Civil War. It's well, it's surprising, but they would have had a small Small presence there. I mean, there yeah. probably would have only been a couple of hundred people. Yeah. A couple hundred men stationed there. We have a farmer's militia ready to go at any moment. They can sneak under the cover of night with boats. and <laughs> To auction off live sheep. Or, or the soldiers. If you, sell, if you split up all the British soldiers, then mm. they can't fight you. Is that how that works? Yeah. I, the farmers are capable of that. Yeah. They yeah. Can do that. Yeah. I, this picket fellow, mm-hmm. who's the worst. Yeah. Did he go on to more things? He died in the Battle of Gettysburg. Oh. Well. Okay. It's a Pickett's Charge, actually, is a is a somewhat famous incident from that. I yes. That's not that Pickett, that's is it? That picket. That's, that's that that's picket? That's the same Pickett. Mm-hmm. That's that Pickett? That's that Pickett. This idiot from Fort Bellingham. Yes. Who was last in his place at West Point. That's the Pickett from Pickett's Charge. Who came in, ruffled everyone's feathers, was a big jerk about it, and put things... He went and he 
almost turned single handedly turned the tide of the Civil War. Yes, by by erroneously charging Union troops at getting or charging at them, right? Mm-hmm. And over overstepping his his secure position mm-hmm. and allowing the Union. Oh my God, that guy! That's the same picket. I was afraid this was gonna happen. Oh, he's the worst. Yeah, he, I can't believe that. Yeah, that he also. What it took for that to happen, for him to give up that pristine thing and then go and just fuck it up so royally. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I guess that works then. He's also uh, the picket that picket fences are named after. No, he isn't. No, he's not. That's not, that's not a thing. <laughs> really that's excited. not real. Well, so what you're telling me is that the, that the, we, have, we have pigs to thank for keeping this country together. That's true. Yeah, a 15-year stand-up mm-hmm. where the only, person that, only thing that died was a pig. Uh, and that there's this just long, bizarre, protracted military standoff over a border dispute but you in the connect, San Juan Islands. You connect the dots. That pig gave his life to save the Union. It did. It really <sighs> did. And if it wasn't for that pig, if it wasn't for that happening, you might have never, on that fateful day of camp, fell into the mud <laughs> and gotten all of your clothes dirty. It was in my pockets. <laughs> Your clothes were in your pockets? No, the mud. There oh, was the so mud much was mud. in your pockets. I got up and it was in my pockets. Yuck. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, thanks to that pig. Thanks to that pig. The, I, pig's, the pig's the hero. They got the news that the United States was still a country, and they, they put up the flag that had been shot, and they had repatched it and sewed it together, and they they wept a little bit knowing that this was... They were they were spies all along. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, really, I think Hornby is also one of the big heroes of this story, because mm-hmm. he refused to escalate the situation, no matter how much he was being pushed to, and who knows what would have happened. I mean, it's hard to say with hypotheticals, but if he landed those troops... With a hot-headed general, yeah, and a whole bunch, and a, the guy who drove over the last of his place in West Point, then Pickett would have died have there and not died in Gettysburg. Whoa, yeah, but and okay, then Gettysburg might have gone differently. Fair enough, but did he? Did any Hornbees die? Did any Hornbees give their life? I I don't know. I don't know what happens to Hornby. Oh wait, but no, but in, in this particular conflict, no, did any of him's die? No, did any of him's troops die? Him? Yeah, did any of him's troops die? <laughs> No. Did any pigs die? Pig, one pig died. So they're the top hero. They have number one rank. Well, thank you for listening to the Seattle Files. Again, my name is Chris Allen. We'll be back next week with a new topic and a new guest. Be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe, and rate us on iTunes. Um, if you have a topic suggestion, shoot me an email at theseattlefiles at gmail.com. Again, thank you for listening, and thank you, John, for being our guest. <coughs>